I lost my mum when I was 15. I was drunk the day she died. It's a hidden problem. The UK's Punjabi community is struggling with widespread alcoholism. Nobody spoke about it and it was all hush hush and pretend that everything's normal to the outside world. Support groups have sprung up in places of worship. Probably the biggest Sikh temple in the UK has acknowledged that this is a big problem in our community. There are calls for the NHS to have more targeted services. We have a limited amount of training and cultural awareness of the stigma, of the subtleties and the layers that we have within subcultures. But something so seemingly embedded will not be easy to change. I have a memory of when I'm around three or maybe four years old. I would play the drums um, in front of my dad's friends and as a reward for me playing somebody would dip their finger into a glass and just touch it on my lips and uh, you know if I was ever lucky enough some of that would actually go into my mouth. So that, that was the beginning of, um, of my affair with alcohol if you like. Bupinder Kula, known in the music industry as Tubsy, nearly lost his life to alcohol. Born in Birmingham, he's part of the UK's Indian Punjabi community, those originally from the Punjab region of the subcontinent. Punjabis have a strong, vibrant cultural identity, but this mostly silent battle with alcoholism is going on in homes throughout this tight-knit community. Even at a young age, Tubsy was encouraged to drink. At seven years of age, I went to India. And to fit in more than anything else, you know, my, my uncle was a big drinker, and to fit in, I, I, he, he poured a drink, and I said, yeah, I'll have some of that, and I, and I downed it in one. And they were like, wow, you know, there's a seven-year-old kid, he's born in England, and, you know, these British kids have really got something here. I was the centre of attention, and, and, I, and I loved it. I, I, I loved all of that. Over time, his drinking progressed to dangerous levels. But while having a few good drinks is celebrated by many members of the Punjabi Sikh community, problem drinking often results in being ostracised. And it's often the stigma surrounding alcoholism that stops people getting the medical help they need before it becomes critical. Tubsy remembers how his father tried to keep his problem quiet. He had to hide my problem from family, from society, from neighbours, from, you know, from everyone. He had to hide it from my siblings. He had to pretend that everything was fine. At the age of 22, the doctors had told me that I wouldn't see my 23rd birthday. I developed jaundice. I started bleeding from everywhere you can think of and, and even everywhere you can't think of. I was by no means a normal 22-year-old. Sadly, Tubsy isn't the only one whose life has been affected by alcohol. The Punjabi community is known for its great hospitality, putting on big colourful parties with plenty of delicious food and a lot of alcohol. Strictly speaking, practising Sikhs aren't allowed to drink alcohol, but this BBC survey found that almost two-thirds do and more than a quarter said someone in their family had had a problem with alcohol. If it was really bad, um, I wouldn't have the children in the house. They'd stay over somewhere or I'd take them out for their tea or we'd go away to my mum and dad's. Davinda Rai lives with her husband, Jazz, in Derby. During the early part of their marriage, Jazz was an alcoholic, drinking as much as a litre of spirit a day. My lad was, I remember when he was, he was only probably four or five, he, he'd, he'd plead with me not to go out. You know, my daughter was older. Without saying anything, she was yelling out to me, Dad, don't have a drink. Don't go out. It breaks you a little bit. Well, actually a lot. He'd be there making noises or banging doors or, or just shouting, just because he, he could. Davinda tried to help Jazz, but instead, as is common for women in the community, she was the one who was blamed. It's the first thing they do when something goes wrong in a marriage or a family. It's the woman's fault straight away because they never want to put the blame on the person. They just try to think of alternatives or different reasons why, but never the actual real reason that they're an addict. And what about the community? Did you get much support from them? No. <laughs> it was taboo. Nobody really wanted to talk about it or acknowledge it. There's a number of people in the community who, who don't even, who are still in denial. Um, and so I think it's still an ongoing process of trying to open up 
uh, the fact that this is happening within the community. Dr. Gurpreet Panu has carried out research on alcoholism in the Punjabi community and says other medical professionals must wake up to the scale of the problem. What's happening particularly with the Punjabi community, especially because they seem to be biologically susceptible to alcohol uh, damage, is that there are more deaths overall related to alcohol use. And this is something that's not widely known. What sits underneath that are all the social problems that also occur. So what we know is that alcohol is related to um, domestic violence, it's related to uh, difficulties that children experience, it's related to unemployment, financial problems, it's related to road traffic accidents, uh, it's related to violent crime and so forth. So, so there's all this hidden social uh, illness that's also present. So what contributes to this big drinking culture? Many believe the tradition of huge, boozy wedding celebrations could play a part. In the Punjabi culture, to be a good host, you know, you've got to put out a decent amount of alcohol. It's all laid on for free. That's part of the hospitality thing. Even those people that would normally drink in moderation, you know, they find themselves, well, you know what, it's here, it's free, it's meant to be enjoyed, why not? You know, who's going to count the units? And the music scene too, with many Bangra lyrics celebrating alcohol. A lot of the songs are based on drink and, and how it's, it should be enjoyed. The, the myth is, is that it, it sort of doubles the effect. You know, you're drinking and you're, you're dancing and you're listen, listening to somebody telling you that, yeah, you're drinking and you're dancing and you're having a good time ego and, and the machoism and you know look at me I can put away X amount of booze I'm a bigger man than you are oh the lads are going to go out and the lads are going to do this and the lads are going to do that so that that is a big part of the culture too slowly but surely help is coming and in some cases from the very heart of the community <laughs> Now, as a recovering alcoholic, Jazz Rai has established a support group in a Sikh temple, or Gurdwara, in Southall, West London. We're here to share our strength, hopes and experiences in addiction. My own younger brother died from this disease. I've seen guys that I know commit suicide due to relationships breaking down due to their drinking. My drinking was definitely taking me down that path. I started drinking when I was 16 like any other teenage experiment in it. Um, over the years it quickly spiralled out of control. Hosting a support group like this whilst prayers continue downstairs sends out a very powerful message that those battling alcohol addictions don't need to be alone, surrounded by shame and stigma, that there is help out there here in the Gurdwara, for example, at the very heart of the Sikh community. People talking openly about their journeys has made people, management committees, the elders in the community, even the priests, some of the Sikh elders, to, to realise that the, there is a problem and we need to do something about it. We can't just keep sweeping it under the carpet. I knew I had a problem, but eventually I think my family knew as well. And I think for a while they were in denial, because as an Asian woman, um, coming out so openly can be very difficult. Um, it got to a point where my family did sit me down and um, put me in for treatment. I went into treatment this last year, 2017, December, and I came out in January, and I've been nearly three months clean. Congratulations. I was absolutely amazed with the response we've not just had from the temple committee, but from the community. And But still, a lot of them are reluctant to come forward because there's still that... Um, that fear of coming forward and um, coming out. It's important work that's starting to make a difference, but health professionals believe that if real and lasting change is to happen, the NHS must play a bigger role. We have a limited amount of training and cultural awareness that does break through those barriers of the, of the stigma, of the subtleties and the layers that we have within subcultures, which need to be understood with training and with more thought around it. So I think there's a lot more that's needed to think about why are we getting people that are younger? Um, why are people uh, from the Punjabi community accessing more medical services, emergency departments, and then coming through to community teams? And why are they not able to access uh, detox and, and outreach in the same way? What, what is lacking in that area. We're not looking for abstinence, it's about moderation and resetting the social norms uh, in terms of alcohol intake.
And the way you can do that is looking at GPs, how they advertise um, uh, alcohol uh, services. You can look at having outreach services that outreach into the community at certain uh, uh, sort of salient points. So, for example, into the homelessness shelters, into domestic violence uh, uh, charities, um, uh, and so forth. So they're reaching out into the communities, pulling people out, and highlighting this problem uh, from an early stage. For Tubsy, it all came to a head two days before he was getting married in India bitten by a poisonous snake and having suffered serious alcohol damage already, his liver collapsed and he later entered a coma. Tubsy survived, but he was given a stark warning. The surgeon that had actually saved me at that time, um, he said, I've got a message for you. He said, uh, if you ever want to commit suicide, he said, don't bother picking up a gun, a knife or a rope. Just pick up a drink and that'll do it. Change can take time, but even for those living in the grip of alcoholism right now, Tubsy is living proof that it is possible to get free and live a happy life once more. By the grace of God, I've got three beautiful children, still got the same wife. My music career is 10, 15, 20 times as busy now as I ever was before. But most of all, every day I remember what it was like because if I forget what it was like, I may just slip up again tomorrow.